Yes, guys, and welcome to RG Handhelds once again. We're bringing you yet another review. This one's the Game Shell. Um, a pretty cool device. I mean, it's quite old. It's about five years old. Uh, you're probably thinking, why am I bringing it to you now? I've only just got my hands on it. Uh, it's um, I have been asking for one for a while. And finally, I got uh, this device. If you haven't seen my last review from Game Shell, um, Clockwork, the actual company is called Clockwork. Uh, I reviewed the U console. You can check out my video of that. Um, that was quite a very popular device. This is coming from the same makers um, from Clockwork, and he was so kindly, uh, Alex, to send me out this game shell. Thank you very much, Alex, for getting this out to me. I very appreciate it. Um, so the game shell, like I say, is quite old. But this particular one, um, they've had to change uh, the memory PCB um, actually on these devices, obviously due to memory shortages. Uh, so they've had to use a totally different uh, memory supplier. Um, it did take a while to come in because of that, but eventually it came in. I have gone ahead, it comes in a kit, uh, a whole kit format. I've actually gone ahead and put it all together, guys, already. So we save ourselves. There's plenty of tutorials online where you can actually see this device uh, being put together. It's it's a fun project, guys. If you're into that, uh, it does take a while. Um, I mean, it takes about half an hour or so to, if you want to do it properly. But this is the game show, guys. Literally, uh, it's powered by a 2.7 inch 320 by 240 screen. And it's got the uh, Cortex uh, A7 1.2 gigahertz. It comes in that one gig of RAM on the board. Uh, and everything is modular on this device. That's why I really like it. Uh, it just all comes together as a modular design. You build everything into little boxes and then, then boxes go together and then form this beautiful little thing called the game show as you can see right in front of you. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, storage coming in with a micro SD card slot. So you could go ahead and plug in. They did provide me, I think, with a 32 gig card in the box. Uh, and the battery comes in at 10, 20 milliamps, uh, which is, I believe, they say a BL5C. Um, I'm sure that's a Nokia battery, but um, maybe uh, it is or not. I'm not sure, we'll take a look. But that is a quick lowdown on the specs. The box is the usual, very similar to U console. Uh, there is a game show. You can scan that QR code, guys, and go straight to the website. I'll hold it there for you. Uh, yes, the box is very nice. And that is the U console right there. Uh, an open source portable game console by clockworkpi.com. If you go over and uh, go to that website. So, Highly hackable open source equipment. And it's got the cool logo on the back. And then it tells you a few things at the back. Open source, open source hardware, open design, highly hackable and easy, easy assembly design. So let's go ahead and open this. It's just a quick unboxing guys. Like I say, I have gone ahead and put it all together. There you go, it's a bit. So in the box, you're gonna have your instruction manual for the game show. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even look at this to put it together. I just went online and checked out ETA Prime's uh, assembly guide video and just followed that. Had it up all done within uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you got some stickers, guys. Very cool stickers which you can uh, put on the device itself. I have put a few on there on the back. Some cool designs here. So whatever your liking is. So thanks for them stickers, guys. Uh, that's the device itself. We'll just quickly take a look. At the, there's not much in the box, but this is the extra back cover that where you can put these uh, um, LR, um, R buttons that you have on the back, uh, you can actually, you know, add this back cover to give you that additional buttons on the back. I didn't go ahead and put that on actually, um, because I find that, you know, I don't need to use that. And you got the module for it right there. 
so let's put the box aside. And let's quickly have a look at the game shell on the outside. But before we go ahead and do that, guys, um, I'm quickly going to just blast this on. Switch it on. There you go, it's booting up. So it feels comfortable in the hand, as all other devices. But the beauty of this one is it's modular, like I was saying. So there you have, you can see at the back, if I just zoom in there, you got these boxes that uh, are built with the chips in there and you just throw the box in here and put it all together extremely easy guys you can see there at the back there's the battery that we was talking about um so there's a chip itself in its modular case uh, up the top here you got the power button which you press down uh, you got your I think it's a micro USB there and your um, charging point there and your 3.5 mil jack down there nothing at the bottom these are like if you twist them this this will come apart the back cover will come apart um, it's all modular like I say there you go you just spin them around it's on standby so don't worry um, yeah so that is the top guys highly hackable it does have Wi-Fi in there d-pad is nice I do like the d-pad feels good it's got this cool little theme let's try and get a close-up here there you go so you got your menu your shift button uh, select and start here and if you press shift you got volume up and down as well uh, so you can put the volume there you go you can see if you're holding down shift uh, which is a cool little feature uh, you got your speaker here it gives out decent uh, sound d-pad's really nice it's really firm i like it uh, travel on the buttons decent very nice uh, i've gone ahead and opened something up random there uh, anyway let's uh, see what loads up um yeah it's very nice it's got that transparent clear background as you can see there not sure what i loaded up there but um see what comes on uh the top like you got the inputs there we've been through that there there's not really much on the device as in controls apart from uh on the top i think we may have to boot this up again it's just there you go let that boot up let's see i've gone ahead and i use retro art on here which is pretty decent uh, i have gone ahead and put a few systems on it can be a little hard to get some stuff onto the device but you need to um like either use linux with the sd card if you don't have linux then you can easily just use up uh, ftp and transfer the files that's the way i did it uh, i use filezilla and uh, you know shh into the device and uh, transfer my games over so what you get you get you got let's go through the settings first um so you got airplane mode power options power saving so i leave it on well we could put balanced so let's leave it on balance. You got Wi-Fi, guys. So that's a bonus of having Wi-Fi. Like I said, that's how you'll transfer your games over. And you have Bluetooth. I've got it in airplane mode. You can see there just to say battery. Volume, brightness, uh, your storage tells you I've got a 32 gig card in there, uh, which is pretty cool. Time zone, languages, notifications. Uh, you can actually update the launcher, which I really like. So when they have a, a new launcher, just hit this button, make sure your Wi-Fi is on and, you know, you can update the launcher. Uh, it tells you about the device here, guys. Some cool information for you there. Uh, it tells you how much memory you can see there. What kernel, CPU, megahertz, four cores, uh, and that ARM7 processor, revision five, uh, and your kernel, your Linux kernel there. 
spot version. The launcher is version 125 stable. And the OS image, which is the latest, I believe, version 0.5 uh, from Clockwork. So some useful information there. And you can go ahead and just power off the device if you press that. You got a button layout uh, option there. Uh, theme manager, where you can select different themes. You got default or you got the OPI. We're using the OPY op1 right now and you can switch to another launcher there's a launcher go um, and you can even select a gpu driver uh, we're using this new uh, experimental gpu rendering but you actually have that software one as well over there so that's something you can like play around with network gateway switch not too sure what that is um, then they've gone ahead and put some retro games on here uh, some emulators. These are the built-in ones, MAME, NES, and so on. Uh, you can use them, guys. Um, but personally, I prefer uh, using RetroArch. So here's some indie games um, that are on the system. Uh, these were already on there. And then Warehouse, I believe that's like a market where you can download stuff. Uh, RetroArch, as you all know. And it's got a couple of games here, Cave Story, uh, Chocolate Doom. Suppose we can go ahead and quickly check out Doom on here. Just so you can see it run. As you can see guys, it runs really good. Like I say, very hackable, cool device this is. I really enjoy using it. Uh, Took me a while to set up guys, so don't expect to like get it and out the box, you know, you need to spend some time on uh, getting your games over and uh, you know, that does take a while because you need to either do it by FTP like I described or if you guys got Linux, you can just go ahead and drop the memory card in there. Uh, I believe it uses ext4 uh, for its file system which linux will read unfortunately windows doesn't unless you got some third-party softwares so that is doom guys uh you just hit that menu button hit the quit i think and press one of these and it will come out yeah it's this top one for yes so that's come out of there uh, what else do we have? Chocolate Doom. Got some Pico 8. I didn't quite get that working, but I will. Um, utilities. You have uh, a few utilities here, which is cool. You've got that Ding Dingux Commander, which I really find useful for, you know, looking at the file system. You can see there, guys. Uh, let's not get into here. Let's just get out before. So that's that. I mean, I recommend this device for someone who likes tinkering. Uh, like I say, you got to spend time on it. Uh, got some indie games, which we've been through. Uh, let's hit the retro arc, but let's see what else. Oh, anything I missed? Reload the UI. Yes, you can reload it. you got a music player and tiny cloud, uh, which is a cool feature as well. That's how you transfer uh, your stuff and you can power off there. So let's go to RetroArch and just see what we can play on here. So I've gone ahead and put some stuff on here already. So if I go to uh, load content, it should load up my uh, directory. There you go. Start directory. And uh, you can see I've gone ahead and put some stuff on here. Not too sure. I think I did set up. Uh, cannonball on here. Yes, I did. There you go. So you want to put a credit in. There you go. And start it. As you can see guys, it runs beautifully smooth on here. Yeah. 
one of my favourite games of all time. Which is based on Outrun, which is called Tannenball. Just want to hit them chicanes, guys, that are coming up here. Try and take them full speed. One, two, three. There you go. Just wanted to do that, guys. So, coming out of there, you just press the menu button, should exit out. Uh, and we go back into uh, Retro Arc again. That was Cannonball, which is the Outrun clone. Sometimes I notice, uh, I don't know why, I think it's software related. Like now, uh, the menu's frozen. So to get back in, you're gonna have to turn it off. This has happened a, a, a few times to me and I'm still trying to figure out why it does that, um, which is beyond me. Um, it may be software related guys, so I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, which can be annoying at sometimes when that's only happening with RetroArch. Um, I will look into that, but I'll just not add any time. Uh, let's see if we can get this powered back on. I think you need to hold the res uh, power button down so it shuts off the system. There you go. And then power it back on as normal. There you go. So that's happened to me a, a few times. Um, I'm not sure it could be software related or maybe my RetroArch needs updating, um, you know, but I'm gonna have to look into more into that. There you go, there's a boot screen, tells you happy hacking. But I do really like the device. Um, battery life isn't too bad either on here. Uh, I just want to show you one more system before we head out and away from this video. So if we go to uh, load content again, start, see, you can see it's working now. It's not freezing. It only happens very randomly. Randomly. So what shall we check out, guys? Um, I don't know. Maybe you want to see some Game Boy Color on this screen because it does look quite nice. Uh, and what can we play? <coughs> Excuse me. Got a few games on here. Let's see if we can get some Mario on here. Go to the yes. Super Mario Bros. <coughs> so let's go ahead and start that up. You can see there. Game Boy Color. You can see it runs really smooth as it would. Uh, you'll be surprised what this thing can actually play. I was quite impressed. Uh, you know, up to PlayStation. Don't expect any GameCube, but uh, even some PSP games can actually run on here, which is pretty impressive for such a small device. And you can upgrade the, the uh, chip in here. Uh, like you say another core you can drop another core in there and to exit out you just press this menu button so that's game boy um, you can see we'll play quite a few systems i've gone ahead and actually put you know a few things on here um which it does run i just want to go through the list with you one more time 
dot dot. So you can see I put 32x, even some 3DO Amiga. I got some Commodore 16. Yeah, I know Commodore 16, and it actually works really well. Final Burn Neo, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, Game and Watch links. Um, you got Mame there, Master, some Mega Drive, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PC, PC Engine, PCX, Sega CD. Uh, runs really well on here. Uh, Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan Color. You got the X1 and X68000 uh, thousand guys, and they all run really well. So I'm happy uh, with this device. So that is the Clockwork Game Show, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Like, I will do more videos, uh, you know, showing different emulators running on here. I really like this device. I think it's a great device for someone, you know, who wants to tinker um, and use the device. But it's not going to be the out-of-box experience you'll get with something like Ambernic. You're going to have to put it together, uh, you know, which is not hard to put together. It comes in a kit form, um, you know, but once you got it together uh, and and you got it all up and running, uh, flash the OS on it, got your games over. It's amazing device, very impressed with it. Uh, it's gonna be one of them devices. Like I say, guys, it's five years old now um, and it's still very popular today. I'm bringing you this video five years later on since it was been released. Um, you know, I've always wanted one and I finally did get one. Uh, thanks to Alex once again. Uh, so hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, guys. Let me know what you think uh, of this game show. Do you still have one? Uh, what you like about it? Um, and do you think it's still considered as a, a really good device as today? Which I think it does. Uh, even after five years, uh, I really rate this device. Uh, it, it's pretty niche, like the U console as well, but, you know, amazing device. Game show. Get on uh, the website, have a look, uh, see what you think. If you don't have one, I highly recommend it, guys. Uh, they're pretty cheap as well now. Well, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.